Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a follow-up video about X570 VRM testing. In the previous VRM video I asked you to comment down in the video what kind of boards you would like to see in an update video. Obviously I reached out to my main board manufacturer's contacts and asked for some boards, for, for example MSI, Gigabyte and all of them. Um, we will get some new boards soon so there will be a big update test for the X570 VRM thing but for today we are going to take a closer look at the X570 Aqua. This is kind of different from all the other boards because it uses a monoblock that covers CPU, voltage regulators and also chipset all at once with water cooling. Therefore it's kind of difficult to compare it with all the other boards because they were all using passive heat sinks on the VRMs. But still we will use the same kind of testing methodology so uh, 125 watt, 165 watt, 225 watt and see how this board performs. I think it's not going to be much better than the Aros Extreme or the Crosshair, but yeah, let's see if maybe it's a surprise. We'll see. Price-wise, this board is I think about 900 euro right now, which is extremely expensive for an X570 board, considering how much the CPUs cost. I mean, this board is more expensive than the CPU you would use on there. Hard to justify, but let's see how the temperatures are, and maybe the temperatures are the benefit of the price and. Obviously the looks, the looks is, are really nice of this board. Opening the package, you can straight see this letter from ASRock, even with my name on there obviously because it's a sample from ASRock, same as multiple other YouTubers received this thing, also my name down here. Yeah, visually it's probably the most beautiful board for X570, I totally have to admit that. We'll start to remove the water block. First this part, I think there's an M.2 slot underneath and also here is an M.2 slot underneath. This part I think is also cooling the network chip which should sit here. Yeah, as I said, this part is cooling an M.2 drive as well as the network chip that is sitting underneath here. Not sure how nicely this thing will cool if there's an M.2 with full load in addition to the network chip. Usually I don't even read manuals of mainboards but in this case I thought I would take a look at how this is described and it looks actually quite nice. Also considering how many screws we have on here I was not sure how many of those we actually have to remove to unmount the water block and the screws that we need to unmount are also indicated right here. Uh, it's kind of interesting that on the chipset right here it looks like one screw is missing but there's no thread underneath so that's that's fine and we also have to only remove those two while this one stays. This one for example also stays, this one, this one, those obviously and that one so we only have to remove the other screws. Now that the water block is removed, we can quickly take a look at the board itself. We have M.2 here, M.2 here, X70 right here, uh, Type C. We have a display port here, which is uh, actually funny, and uh, we have a network controller on this location. Right here, we have the 14-phase VRM supply of this board. Here we have the VRM controller, well, very well known IR35201 and yeah you're probably familiar with this controller. Obviously it cannot handle 14 individual faces but if we flip the board around right here those small dots those are the doublers and that's why we have 14 faces doubled. I really like the quality feel of this board. 
it feels like it's a full metal part, like full CNC milled. Yeah, some decent amount of aluminium. Same goes for the bottom part with the engravement right here. And I think RGB lighting on the bottom. Feels quite nice, let's take a look on the water flow in this one. Obviously this part makes contact with the CPU, there is this label on here and I really hate those labels. I never understand why they place them on there, it's not like you have to protect this. Especially it's only, it comes already mounted on the board, so why would you have to protect this? It only leads to that some people forget to peel it off. Even it's written on there, I know. This part right here makes contact with the MOSFETs with the power stages. I had to remove the thermal pad that was sitting right on top here because we have some screws underneath. Same goes for this area, it's also for power stages. Uh, inductors on those two areas and obviously on the bottom we have the chipset. The water flow starts at the intake right here where the water is split up into basically three channels. The main channel goes to the CPU. Underneath this plastic cover we have the fins where the water flows through to the outtake. We also have two very thin channels right here. I think they're also too thin. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously they had to make them so thin to make sure that a sufficient amount of water is going through the CPU and not through the VRM channel or through the chipset channel. But I'm concerned if there's, let's say you're using pastel liquids and you have maybe some yeah, particles in there. I would be worried that those small paths would be blocked after a while, not so sure, because they look like one and a half millimeter thick, maybe, so it's really, really thin. Anyway, intake right here goes through the CPU, underneath this plastic part we have the fins, goes through this channel for the VRM, goes through this channel, through the chipset cooling right here, and then outtake. I'm done with the testing, but before we get to VRM temperature, we will take a quick look at my system right here, or the system that's assembled there, because some of you will also ask, what about chipset temperature and also M.2 temperature, because I highlighted before when I did the disassembly that there's this cooling block in the middle that's cooling the M.2 and at the same time also the network chip. That's why I was a little bit concerned if the heat dissipated from the network chip gets in kind of conflict with the M.2, but that's not the case, I can directly say that. I was running 30 times crystal disk mic while Prime95 was running in the background, but Prime95 with lower load, so uh, 1344K, which is resulting in about 100 watt uh, load on the CPU, which you can see right here. Chipset temperature never exceeded 50 degrees Celsius, perfectly fine chipset temperature. And same goes for the M.2. The Corsair MP600 maximum 49 degrees Celsius. So component wise, chipset temperature and also drive temperature, perfectly fine. Similar to my previous VRM testing video, I did three different test scenarios, 125, 165 and 225 watt load. Um, you can go and check out the previous video if you want to know what kind of uh, regions those were or what kind of test conditions um, I was simulating with those um, settings. Let's start with 125 watt load on the CPU with open test bench. So that's what you see right here, no airflow across the board, which doesn't make a difference anyway in this case. We can see the X570 Aqua is by far the best with 39 degrees Celsius maximum temperature, while Aros Extreme had maximum of 49 degrees Celsius and Corsair 8 Hero, for example, had 51 degrees Celsius. Now we are going to simulate 
to put this into an O11 dynamic because in my previous video I was also mounting all motherboards inside an O11 dynamic mounted the AIO on top so we had some airflow across the VRMs it's more real world testing real world scenario and uh, yeah we were just taking the same test results from the open test bench and putting it in the same chart because for a water cooled board it doesn't make a difference if you mount it in the case or not the temperature is just dependent on the radiator that's it and your fan speed looking at the results the aqua is still on top but the difference is extremely small 39 degrees celsius max while ours extreme was 42 and crosshair 8 hero was 44 going to 165 watt load again open test bench aqua maximum 45 degrees celsius ours extreme maximum 58 crosshair 8 hero maximum 60 degrees celsius same test conditions but all other boards were mounted in the o11 dynamic so they have airflow across the vrms the x570 aqua from asrock has peaked at 45 degrees celsius still while ours extreme and crosshair 8 hero are basically the same 46 and 47 degrees celsius one degree celsius is basically measurement tolerance or room temperature tolerance so we could say that in this condition it's identical going to 225 watt load open test bench again as expected aqua is the best 53 degrees celsius max rs extreme 64 corsair 8 hero 68 putting it into the case the aqua and rs extreme are exactly the same and corsair 8 hero is only a few degree worse now what's the conclusion of all the data if we just take a look at What's happening if we take a very well designed board and put it into a also very well ventilated case? The argument of having water cooled VRMs on this board doesn't really count anymore in my opinion because the temperature is basically identical. I mean two, even two or three degree more or less on the VRM doesn't matter at all. So yeah getting this board because the VRMs are water cooled would not be the argument for me personally but you can always have perfect temperatures on your components you will always have great temperature on your cpu vrm and chipset at the same time while you will never have a chipset fan that can fail but you also have that on the hours extreme so you kind of have to evaluate yourself if this board is worth 900 euro for you personally i would say it's a little bit too expensive but that's up to you to decide the board is still absolutely beautiful it's packed with a ton of features like two times thunderbolt 3 but you have to decide yourself if it could be an option for you for purchase let me know in the comments what you think about the x570 aqua and about the testing results thanks for joining in and see you next time